Today we will test the sharpness of the two cheapest lenses made by Canon. At the ending of this clip we will find out which is sharper. First, let me tell you a few things about the lenses. The first one is the Canon EF 50mm f1.8 STM. It can work on both full frame and APS-C sensor DSLRs. It's quite small, almost 4 cm long, and it has a weight of 160 grams. The price of this lens is around 125 US dollars. The second lens is the Canon EFS 24mm f2.8 STM. It was made only for Canon's APS-C sensor DSLRs. It's smaller than the 50mm lens, being roughly 2.3 cm long. It's also lighter. This lens cost around 150 US dollars. So we will test the cheapest and the second cheapest prime lens made by Canon. As always, there will be three rounds. Sharpness in the middle of the image, sharpness in the corners and diffraction. This is a detailed sharpness test. We will not rush. I will gradually close the aperture to see how the images change. The first round starts now. Let's see the sharpness in the middle of the image. At f1.8, we only have the 50mm lens with a decent start. Let's now bring in both lenses at their widest apertures, f1.8 on the left and f2.8 on the right. The 24mm lens looks sharper, but it also has a much more closed aperture. Now we will align both lenses at f2.8. These are some good results. Both of them look great. There is no obvious difference, so we don't have a winner yet. If we close even more, they continue to show the same amount of sharpness as you can see now at f3.5. I looked everywhere to find some notable differences. When it comes to sharpness in the middle of the image, these lenses are the same. At f4.5, we see excellent results and identical amounts of sharpness. If we close to f5.6, the lenses are head to head and at f8, both images are just a bit more punchy. The two lenses finish this round in a tie. They have the same amount of sharpness in the middle of the image. Let's now see the second round, sharpness in the corner. At f1.8, again, we only have the 50mm lens where we see some ghosting. Here we have both of them at their widest apertures. Let's align them at f2.8. The two sides look very similar. Same thing at f3.2. We will start to see just a small difference if we stop down to f3.5. Here, the 50mm lens is slightly sharper. At f4, both lenses have good results in the corner of the image. We have a small improvement at f5, but for excellent results in the corners, we'll have to stop down to f5.6. At this aperture, we can clearly see that the 50mm lens is just a bit sharper. If we close even more until we reach f9, there will be no major improvements, but the left side continues to be a bit sharper. So the 50mm lens won the second round. It is better in the corner of the image. Let's now go all the way to f22 to see which lens handles diffraction better. Both lenses will start to lose a bit of sharpness if we stop down to f10. No major differences for the two sides but the left side seems to be slightly sharper. At f11, again, the left side is a bit better. From now on, I looked closely, they have the same performance. Stopping down to f13 and both lenses handle diffraction quite well. At f14, still, the corners are perfectly usable. Image quality will start to deteriorate more at f16 and if we go further, of course, both images will be too soft. When it comes to diffraction, these lenses have about the same result. If you take into consideration the price, these are not bad lenses when it comes to sharpness. They deliver some good results, but we must have a winner. The 50mm lens is better in the corner of the image until we reach f11. For this reason, it won this sharpness battle. I will make more videos like this one, I will test more lenses, so consider subscribing. See you on the next one.